everyone, welcome back to part two of my Arch Linux install guide. Uh, we'll just try to make this one a bit uh, quicker, I feel like the last one was quite a bit rambling. Uh, and speaking of fixing mistakes of yore, uh, we actually have a few things I wanted to mention that are tangentially related to the last install video that might make things a bit easier. Um, two of them are actual just little mistakes that I made, and the second one is just something that I didn't mention that should have probably made things easier. So first thing I want to do is talk about um, networking. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't see the first video, this is one of those cases where it probably would make sense to watch the first video. Before you watch this one, there'll be a card. You can just sort of fast forward through it and find the important stuff. So when it comes to networking, I didn't really talk about hooking up networking at all um, because in my case, running this in a virtual machine, if I just try to ping uh, a site right here, it works immediately with no setup. But one of the things that I realized is that when it comes to Arch Linux, that's not always the case. I've installed Arch Linux on a couple of different systems now, a laptop and sort of a desktop uh, setup that I have. And um, neither of them was that simple to get set up. Now, if you were to just plug a computer into uh, an ethernet port, Ideally, it should be that simple, and so that might be the best way to go about trying to get Arch set up, but unless you're going to leave it plugged into an Ethernet po port, at some point you're going to need to get Wi-Fi set up, so it just makes sense to have some sort of a Wi-Fi utility enabled. There's two commands that we want to talk about when it comes to networking. The first is one called IP Link. And what this will do is just print out all of your various network interfaces. Uh, now, as you can see, I have one here. Uh, well, two here. One is low, and I, that's not important. That's just, just don't worry about that right now. But the second one here, ENP0S3, that is basically showing up as an Ethernet interface in this virtual machine, which should mean that as long as that's working, I'm connected to the Internet. Now... Under most scenarios, there will be another interface here that starts with like WLAN uh, with LAN or something, something like that. It'll start with a W and that will be your Wi-Fi interface. You want to make sure that's showing up. And if not, you'll have to go through the Arch Wiki and try to figure out where to get the right firmware to get that to work. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, that was a fairly easy fix for me. Once you have that, there's a program here on the ISO. It's called Wi-Fi Menu. And when you run it, you'll have to type in the name of the interface. So like Wi-Fi menu, W, whatever your the name of your interface here is. And that should get worked out pretty, pretty simply. Uh, now I know I'm not giving like the best example here, but once you get into this Wi-Fi menu, it's wicked easy to get set up. Uh, the next issue that we're gonna run into is here after we have changed on to the Chirrut uh, and way down here when we're generating locale.gin, um, before you can run this command, you actually need to edit a file right here, slash etsy slash locale.gin. I just completely blew right over this in the in the install guide, completely missed it. Uh, generate that file, then generate locale.gin again, and you'll be good. And then the other thing that we have to do is we have to edit etsy slash hosts, and you'll notice here, let me zoom in a bit here, the what we're supposed to type is 127.0.0.1 localhost colon colon one localhost and then 127.0.1.1 and our host name info uh i did not do this i typed 127.0.0.1 so uh we'll need to fix that the good thing is both of the mistakes that i made should be fixed or should be fixable even after we've completely installed arch linux so what we can do is we can use uh, nvim or anything else to edit etc slash locale dot gin. And when we come in here, we're going to want to uncomment uh, the line that applies to us. So you're probably going to want whatever your country code is and then UTF-8. Uh, in my case, that should be en underscore us. If you hit slash, you should be able to search and then we'll search for en underscore uh, us. And that's what I want. I'm going to uncomment the UTF-8 line, and then we can save the changes, get out of that. And we're going to run the command locale-gen. There we go. Very, very nice. And then if we come in here and edit uh, slash etsy slash hosts, we can just fix my little mistake and change this third line down here to 127.0.1.1. And that should make sure that we're good to go. Now we can pick up where we left off in the last video. Oh, one quick thing before we do that. Um, if you want to set up Wi-Fi, you're gonna need to install an app to handle that for you because of course you do, it's Arch Linux. So the one that uh, is recommended is you just do pack-s and install a program called Network Manager. And when I reboot here in a second, I'll show you how to get that set up. Or whoop, it's a pacman-s and then install Network Manager. 
And then one more thing you should do uh, before we can restart, uh, if you're using Wi-Fi, is you're going to want to do System CTL Enable uh, Network Manager, the same way that we enabled DHCPCD in the last video. Um, now, do keep in mind this is case sensitive. Uh, if I run this, it'll create the sim links. We'll be all good. But if I run something very similar and I just use all lowercase, it's going to say, "Hey, I don't know what you're talking about." So that's great. We should be now good to reboot. So we can exit the root and we can run the reboot command and we'll be all good. I don't want to boot the existing OS here, boot into Arch. Uh, so now we can log in as our user here. Um, this is just a Zeesh thing to worry about this. You won't see this unless you're also using Zeesh. Now, one thing that I am doing slightly differently is last time I downloaded a program to make my user directories, that seemed weird. It made a lot of directories that I didn't want to, and there are ways to config that program. But I thought if I'm going to do any kind of configuration, it might be just as easy to just make a directory and we'll make a folder for like repos and some media and, uh, you know, maybe downloads and that'll be it for now and I'll make more if I need to. Now I have some user folders in a much simpler way and I don't have a bunch of clutter if I don't want it. So uh, now we are ready to get started. Uh, we can do a ping and we should still have network access because we enabled DHCP CD. Uh, if you're using that network tool, uh, the command you're going to want to use is nmcli. And let me direct you to the right spot on the Arch Wiki here because I have spent a good bit of time on this page. Um, it's not terribly difficult to set up and there are some GUI apps that you can install that will help. You connect like little applets and things. Um, so if we just search for network manager, here's the command you're going to want to want to run. You're going to want to run nmcli device Wi-Fi list and it will list out all of your networks with the proper SSID, uh, the name of the network and everything. And then you're going to want to run this command right here nmcli device wi-fi connect you're going to type in the ssid the name of your network you're going to type in password and then type in the password for your wi-fi and you will be connected and you'll be able to install things all right so uh now we should be ready to get a lot of different things uh set up and frankly getting a like display manager and a basic networking thing installed is not all that difficult so i probably should have included it in the first video but whatever here we are I'll try to do a couple of things to make this actually interesting. Anyways, uh, let's let's go ahead and get a graphical environment set up. So I'm going to be using Awesome Window Manager. That's just what I picked. You can use whatever you want, GNOME, KDE, whatever whatever floats your boat. This process will vary a bit, but I'll tell you the important things, uh, or to the best of my knowledge, I'll tell you the important things. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do Pacman uh, S to install some new programs. Um, if it wasn't clear in the last video, you can do S underscore s and search for things so if you want to you know see hey what's the name of the package for the awesome window manager right here's right here highly configurable framework network window manager uh, community slash awesome awesome is the name of that window manager so we're going to need a couple of things here we're going to need um uh, a window manager we're going to need a terminal uh, i'll try alacrity uh we're going to need what else are we going to need we're going to probably want a browser so we'll do firefox and Firefox, I believe, is going to ask us to install some fonts. Uh, if you don't, you could just use like any font package you like. Uh, there's one called like Noto Fonts that's pretty good. It's got uh, stuff that you like. Uh, and then we need a display server. So in that case, we're going to use something called Xorg, and we're going to need the Xorg, Xorg server, and we're going to need the Xorg uh, dash X. And well, actually, it'd probably be better to just install all of Xorg. Whatever. So we'll hit enter. Um, you cannot perform this operation unless you're root. Of course not. We will add sudo in front of that. And what have we got here? So it's asking us, there are 49 members of the group Xorg. We're just gonna hit enter because we wanna install them all. And you can see Xorg, uh, Xorg server and Xorg xinit are actually part of this package. So we didn't need to type that out. You can just type in Xorg and make sure you hit enter when it asks you what you wanna install, but we'll install all of Xorg. And again, here it's asking us what fonts do we wanna to install to work with Firefox. Uh, I'm gonna hit two here and do that Noto font package. And then we can just hit yes. This will sort of, you know, do the same thing. It's sort of like pack strap. We just sit back and wait. Um, in the interest of avoiding any further unnecessary errors, we're not going to be drinking the whiskey this time. Instead, I've got a nice rum. Uh, so then the next thing we need to do is we need to generate a new file for Xorg uh, after we get everything installed. So we'll do touch and we're going to create a file called .xinitrc. Uh, and then what we can do is we can use a text editor to get in here, edit this X and NRC, and we're going to type in exec or execute, and then the name of our 
window manager. Um, now in this case with awesome window manager, uh, you can just look up on the arch wiki, most likely the, uh, whatever sort of uh, display manager or desktop environment you are using. And it will tell you at some point in there what command to put into Xinit RC, or if you're using something like light DM uh, or some sort of login manager, this won't be an issue either. You can just sort of select from a list of all of your installed uh, desktop environments and window managers and select what you want to boot into. But since we're not doing that, and I'm not doing that just because the ideal doesn't really appeal to me. It doesn't seem necessary. I'm perfectly fine with just logging in through the TTY and running one command to get into my system. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and save that file, quit out of them. And what we should be able to do now is we're going to run start X. And we have a display environment. This is it. This is awesome window manager. And holy crap, we're in. Sweet. So... We don't have a terminal hooked up yet. Um, well, like once saved, but we should have Alacrity. So I'll go ahead and try to run Alacrity. Okay, here we've got a terminal. Um, let's switch to like a tiling mode and we could try to also maybe open up um, Firefox. Oh, by the way, I'm using Command R to get into the run launcher here. If you're also checking out Awesome Window Manager, uh, that might be interesting for you to know. Okay, so we've got Alacrity and we've got Firefox. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is, do I have XRander installed? I do, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna wanna jack with this a bit. All right, give me one second, I'll be right back. I've got to adjust the display resolution in this um, virtual machine and then we'll get into it. One thing I will mention, if you're using Awesome Window Manager, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about Awesome Window Manager because I don't know if anyone else is even interested in using this, but Mod S or Command S or Super S, whatever you want to call it, will bring up all of the available keyboard shortcuts that you have. Uh, so you can see here, Super R is your run launcher, Super F will toggle full screen. Um, you can use Super J to switch back and forth between windows and things. Um, there's a lot of good keyboard shortcuts in there and try to familiarize yourself with them as much as you can. Um, for now, let's see if I can't fix my display resolution here. Okay, let's try and make the font slightly bigger here so we can read it. Let's clear. So a couple of issues we're going to have pretty immediately when it comes to uh, Arch Linux. Uh, one of the first ones is we've talked about getting networking working. Video stuff should work pretty much out of the box. If you have a specific graphics card, you shouldn't have an issue. Like video should come up and it shouldn't be an issue, but you might want to like search the repos for, uh, you know, a graphics driver. I think the command for that is LSPCI will show you all of your various sort of devices that you have installed. So for example, I can see here VGA compatible controller um, that should be sort of the graphics setup that I have. So I could do something like pacman-ss and search for um, a VMware driver. And oh yeah, I've got a few here. Video VMware, there's a driver. If I install that, it might make things work a bit smoother. And the same would be true if you're using like a graphics card. Um, but one thing we will have is that if I try to, let's launch Firefox here, something like that. And uh, let me try to go watch a YouTube video. Maybe we can try to learn how to make a Hemingway daiquiri or something like that. This is a fun drink to make and I recommend you try it, but the problem is, by default on Arch Linux, we do not have any audio output and for whatever reason the video isn't even pretending to play. Um, that's an issue, I would imagine. Anyways, the point is we don't have audio and we need to fix that. So what we can do is we're gonna search Pac-Man for uh, something called Alsa. Uh, I think I spelled that wrong. It's ALSA. And you can see we've got quite a few packages here. This is one of the standard sort of audio drivers. You've got ALSA and you've got um, Pulse Audio. Uh, what we want is this package here called ALSA Utils or ALSA Utilities. So what we can do is we can run sudo pacman s install ALSA Utils. And then what we should have is a command called ALSA Mixer. Okay, and you can see here, these are all of our various uh, input audio devices. And you can see they're all here. They're just muted by default for whatever reason. I, I don't even know. If you hit uh, F1 here, you get a little help menu and you can see if you just hit M, you can unmute and then you sort of control it with the keyboard. So we're here for our master, we'll hit M, it's capital M, turn the volume all the way up. And we'll just do the same thing for like any speaker output we have, any headphones or anything. This probably isn't the best way to go about it. You'd probably want to sort of test and set the audio volume appropriately, but you know, I'm not really in a mood to be very precise here. So turn it up and rip the knob off. And then we can close out of that with control C and we should have audio now. 
Next thing I want to do is I, I want to pull down some dot files. This is probably something that is tangentially related to what people will want to do. Um, so I always control my dot files with FS, SSH. So we'll do sudo pacman dash s and install open SSH. And then what we want to do is generate an SSH key so that I can pull down my dot files. So we'll use SSH um, dash keygen and dash t ec dsa dash b 521 should make sure that we've got really good encryption and nothing funky will happen hit enter it's going to ask where we want to save it just use the default location it's going to want a password give it a password there we go and I'll probably clear out some of this uh what we can do is we can cat out um dot ssh ssh slash id ec dsa dot pub which is the public address which is what we want to add to our github account so we, we can copy that um then what we have is all of the ssh keys that are in our github account we'll just hit add new ssh key give it a name paste in that public uh, ssh key add new ssh key and then we can check on a repo here. Um, for example, my dot files here, this is what I'm gonna wanna pull down. And if we hit clone or download, you can sell us, it lets us do this via HTTPS, in which case we would just clone the actual URL or we could clone via SSH doing it this way. So we're gonna, of course, wanna clone via SSH. I will change directory into that repo folder that I set up as a user directory. And I will do git clone git at github.com, my username slash dot. Uh, it's gonna check and make sure I wanna use the SSH key, type yes, and then it's gonna ask for my password, type in the password, that'll start doing its thing. Oh, and then one other thing I might wanna do is I'm gonna pull down my farms repo. All right, so then if we change directory back to home, what we should be able to do is just link up some got dot files here. So we'll let, list out and, okay, let's see. We want to create a link from slash repo dot and I'm using ln dash s to create a symbolic link. Uh, so we'll link from dot, uh, we'll link our dot config folder and we'll just link it into our home directory. Now if we do an ls dash la, you can see here we have a we have a link to that config folder. Uh, now we can remove a few of the things that we're not ever going to use here and just link up any of the things that we are going to use. So we could remove the zsharc here that they created and then we'll link up from my dot files uh, the env file. We'll link our bin file and we could probably just cat out um, repo dot or ls-la and repo dot, sorry. And uh, we'll see what else we need. We might get the git config and that's actually probably it. There's not too many of these. So we'll do ln-s into the repo, into dot, grab the git config and drop that in our home directory. So now if we do ls-la, you can see all of our dot files should be here. They're all linked up. There's a few little tiny issues and things, but we'll get that fixed up later. Um, what we should be able to do now though is uh, reload awesome and it will use our config that we've already set up. Well, actually first we need to link the fonts uh, because one of the fonts is the font that I have installed to use for Alacrity and my Alacrity config, it's, it's a bit complicated. But uh, anyways, uh, I have the fonts stored in repo fonts. And then if I go into a folder called Mac fonts and list, you can see there's just a ton of fonts in here. Uh, these are fonts I've collected over years and years and years. I've been a motion graphics designer and graphic designer for a while. So I have quite a few big fonts collection that I just want to drop in here. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, I believe the location that we want is slash user share fonts. And yeah, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a number, another symbolic link so that we can add fonts and remove fonts from our Git repository. And we'll link from repo fonts, Mac fonts, and we'll link that into slash USR slash share slash fonts. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. We need uh, to do that as super user. So we'll do sudo in front. And then if we go into user share fonts, list out the files, you can see that maxi fonts folder is installed. And if we list out the contents of that, all of those fonts are there now. Very nice. Now let's exit out of Alacrity, exit out of Firefox. And let's try to reload Alacrity. So we could just completely restart the computer, but if we hit Command S, you can see all of our keyboard shortcuts here, and we have a shortcut to reload Alacrity. So Control Super R. And not much should really change, but if we try to launch, ah, I see a problem that we had. Um, I can show you what the issue is, but for now, what we need to do is we need to quit Alacrity, and I just need to really quickly install D menu. Uh, so ignore the weird 
resolution stuff, I'm just gonna do pacman sudo pacman s and install d menu. Okay, and then we can run startx again. Okay, and now if we try to launch Alacrity, boom, you can see we have a much simpler sort of interface. It's it's using my Alacrity config and my um, awesome window manager config the way that I want it. To. So uh, the issue that we have there, I said I'd show you is if we go into my awesome window manager config, if I search for D menu, you can see here, I've replaced the standard run prompt with a secondary program called D menu. It's a bit of a better application launcher. And so since I forgot to install that, it just wasn't launching the run prompt at all. So I had to go out to the TTY and fix that real quick. But as you can see, it wasn't all that difficult of a fix. So I think we're in the clear. Next thing we want to deal with probably is wallpapers and some transparency, uh, because that's something that by default should work in my terminal, but it's not right now. I'll show you how to fix this for awesome window manager. Although just keep in mind the processing going to vary a bit depending on what window manager you use or what graphical environment you use. So we're going to go into config and we're going to go into my awesome config into my RC Lua file. And yeah, 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 I get it. 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 All right. So we'll go down to the bottom and you can see here, I have two commands started. Uh, well, first thing is if you want gaps, uh, just add this thing right here, beautiful .useless gaps equals five. But if you go into auto start, you type in the command awful .spawn with shell, you can just literally run different uh, programs to start with the shell. And so one is called PyCom and the other is a program called Nitrogen with some options here. Now, Nitrogen is a wallpaper drawler type program. It'll just throw up a wallpaper for you. And PyCom is a sort of compositor renderer that will allow us to get some transparency. So what can we do here? We're gonna do pack sudo pacman dash s and install both PyCom and Nitrogen. And in the meantime, while that's happening, I'm gonna to wanna to pull down some wallpapers. So we'll go into my media folder and I'm gonna do a git clone at git at github.com. I'll pull down my wallpapers. Now, of course you don't have to do this. You can just grab any image you want, but since I have that wallpaper git directory set up or git repo set up, I might as well just pull that down and use that. Okay, this is taking a ridiculously long time to launch. Let's come over to a new window here and let's just search for a wallpaper here. And what we can do is we can just save this somewhere. Uh, we'll save it in that media folder. And then if we launch that program, Nitrogen, what we should be able to do is come to the preferences, add a location, and then select that wallpaper. Um, what we wanna do is probably set the mode to zoomed fill. And then if we hit apply, now we have a wallpaper that is drawn on all of our desktops. Very, very nice. Now we still don't have transparency, but I figured out that was actually just an issue with the virtual box settings. So we're not gonna get transparency, but any other system you install this on, transparency will be being rendered by that PyCom program. So then there's a lot of other things we could do because the thing is there's just quite a lot that is not installed by default with uh, Arch Linux. And that's really what I've been doing over the past few days. You know, like I'll go around, start doing things and I might realize, hey, I want a file manager. So I do some looking and, you know, it turns out there's some stuff like uh, Ranger or uh, the V file manager that are great on the command line. Or, you know, if you want like a lightweight, simple graphical file, ma file manager, something like PC Man FM, and I'll go ahead and install those. And then, you know, if I'm launching PC Man FM and let's say I'm browsing around and, oh, I realize, oh crap, I need an image viewer. So then I have to go and look for an image viewer. And uh, if you're looking for one, a good one is called Faye. It's very nice, minimal, simple, and in like seconds there it is it's done and now we can launch some images and take a look at them and hey we've got a nice image viewer this is really sort of the process with Arch Linux it's like when you come across something you need you do a bit of research and you find something you want and it works and the best resource for this far and away is of course the uh, Arch wiki this is a great resource for finding stuff. You know, if you just go down to the installation guide right here on the homepage, there is a section called list of applications. And it's literally just a list of apps that you might want to install to do various things. You can see we've got uh, web servers, web browsers, file sharing apps, communication type apps, email apps, news, and all sorts of things. But really the way that I've been using Arch is I just sort of go through and do the types of things that I would do on a daily basis. And when I come into 
into an area where, hey, I don't have a good tool for doing that. I just go out and try to find one. And so I think that's probably a good spot to end this video. I didn't know exactly where that we would end this video or how far we would go, but we have Arch Linux up and running and I can do everything I need to do. I can write, I can look at images. Um, you know, if I install Caden Live, I can do some video editing and I'm quite happy. Like I said, I've installed this on two different systems now. And ideally, this will be the last time that you see good old Mac OS on a uh, system anytime soon on this channel, at least. Uh, now, speaking of the YouTube channel, I did really quickly just want to mention at the end of this video, um, a little note about my YouTube channel I'm still loading for whatever reason. My network is going crazy. Oh, well, it's probably because I'm pulling down dot files over here. Yep, that'll do it. Um, we could probably just go ahead and end that process. Anyways, if I go over to my YouTube channel, you can see it's doing really well. And I wanted to say thanks for that. It was just a week or two ago that I was like making a video saying thanks for hitting uh, a thousand subscribers and I'm damn near close to 3000 now. Uh, and that's because there's a certain amount of people that are actually watching the videos on this channel and that's great. I really appreciate it. I don't know quite how many of these people that is, um, but since there are a few people, I wanted to mention that I'm having like a few little issues with monetization. I don't want to get into it and be too specific, but uh, in order to fix it, it looks like I'm going to have to do a thing uh, that basically is just going to result in all of the comments that I've left on various videos being removed. Uh, any of the comments that anyone else has left should still be there. Any of the, all the views, all the subscribers, all the other things should still show up and there really shouldn't be much of a difference at all but all of the comments that I personally have left as part of the channel are going to be removed. Uh, and so I'm gonna go through before I do that and make sure that any of the comments where I've left like an important link or anything are going to be moved up to the description or be moved onto a new comment on the new channel. Uh, but I just wanted to mention, if you're watching the channel and you notice, hey, all the comments are gone, that's why I know it's, I, there's not really a better way for me to fix it. It's, it's annoying, but whatever. That is all for this video. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope this was helpful. And uh, you know, hey, look forward to more uh, Arch Linux content, hopefully. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.